Hi, I'm Jay Sellers with the Brunswick Glen Joint Water and Sewer Commission. Today we're digging deeper into why we bill a base rate. Every year, local and state government agencies are required by law to prepare a balanced budget. This balancing is done by ensuring that any funding needs such as payroll, vehicle repairs, system maintenance and training can be matched by a funding source such as sales taxes, property taxes and business licenses in the city and county government. However, the daily needs for the administration, operations, and maintenance of the JWC budget are met almost entirely by user fees billed monthly to each customer. Though we do seek funding when available from the special purpose local option sales tax known as SPLOST, that funding is generally dedicated to large capital improvement projects like replacement of aged infrastructure, not daily needs like vehicle maintenance, pipe repairs, and payroll expenses. So sure, we're a local government agency, but let's think of a water utility as a business. Unlike the city and county governments that rely on taxes and grants for their expenses, we're what's referred to as an enterprise fund. Our business is selling water that we have sent to your point of use after drawing it up from a well and then treating the wastewater that you send back to us to make it safe to put into the river. We also provide critical fire protection services to homes and businesses using hydrants and overhead sprinkler systems. While we want to encourage your water conservation from an environmental standpoint, for our purposes here, let's talk about the positive and negative effects of both using more and less of our services. That'll help understand why we recently started billing a base rate. We develop a budget annually that's dependent upon a projection of revenue. And we have three main types of costs, capital, debt service, and operating. Capital costs include rehabilitation and replacement of existing infrastructure and new infrastructure. While new construction costs are generally covered by the developer through the payment of tap-in fees, expansion, repair, and rehabilitation of the water distribution system, wastewater collection system, and wastewater treatment plants is covered through rates when necessary. Where cash on hand allows, capital improvement projects are funded out of the operating budget in each division. Debt service costs are related to the amount that we owe on loans and bonds. We issue municipal bonds to make repairs or upgrades to the system that far exceed our cash available in the bank. Because we work hard to ensure that our bond rates are the best available, it makes more financial sense for us to take out a loan for 10, 15, or even 30 years than to raise your rates to an unaffordable level to enable us to complete big jobs. Known as the REU fee on the statement, debt service recovery charges are then billed to each customer as a proportion of the total bonds issued based on the customer's REU or residential equivalent unit. We calculate the REU for a facility based on an industry standard demand calculation table. For example, a restaurant has a higher demand for water than a single family residence and will pay a higher REU fee based on peak seating capacity and hours of operation. Operating costs include what we need to run the systems day in and day out. Some of those are included in the administrative portion of the bill, specifically things that are unlikely to vary by much month to month, such as payroll, training costs, office supplies, and computers. Even if you use no water or sewer service at all, we have to pay a good bit of these overhead costs to ensure that the service is available when and where you need it. Some costs for a water system are fixed regardless of the volume of water treated. Others vary based on the amount of water treated and others are somewhere in between. The challenge in arriving at a complete and stable revenue picture is determining the appropriate fixed revenue to charge along with a reasonable usage charge to meet the variable revenue costs, all while being mindful that we typically collect less fixed revenue than the fixed costs. We then can cover the shortfall with variable revenue, assuming that income grows at the same rate as variable costs. In years past, we often missed that goal, especially in periods of time when rainfall was heavy, reducing irrigation system usage but driving up costs to the treatment plant from groundwater infiltration into pipe cracks and service water uh, at manholes. Ideally, if no customer turned on a tap or flushed a toilet for 30 days, the admin fee would cover our administrative and fixed operational costs. The RU fee would allow us to meet our bond obligations. Then as flow increased, the usage charge would equally match the variable charges related to water and sewer treatment. That's a challenging goal. We accomplished that goal by establishing the base rate. Starting in July 2019, we moved from billing the consumption portion of the bill for every gallon consumed to billing our base rate for the first 1,000 gallons and a variable rate for each additional gallon. This helped stabilize the projected income for our operating budget, plus it also made billing more consistent from month to month for, uh, for our more conservative water consumers. The base rate and REU fee are then broken down by service since most of our customers have both water and sewer while some only have one or the other. The base fee and REU fees are allocated proportionately and fairly as to not double dip on that revenue. In a nutshell, 
We bill a base fee, REU fee, and usage charge to help ensure that your bill is as consistent and equitable month to month and represents your fair share of all costs involved in providing water and sewer services to you. State law requires oversight of this process by a governing body, such as our Board of Commissioners, presently made up of seven members. Three citizens appointed by a grand jury, two citizens elected by the public, and one appointed by both the city and the county commission. Once management and the board have agreed upon the conservative needs for the budget, the user rates and fee structure is formulated by an independent third-party rate consultant to ensure that the monthly bill that you pay meets all of the needs of our budget while still remaining affordable, fair, and equitable to all of users. This budget and rate draft is then approved for distribution to the public by the board, which holds public meetings to get feedback before adoption by the agency when the official fiscal year begins, which in uh, our case is July 1st. If you're watching this prior to the adoption of the new budget and rates, you can count on staff, management, and the board to be available to answer your questions and concerns at our regular public meetings or at the town hall meetings. We will publicize the schedule of these meetings and hope to see you there. Every day, the staff of the JWSC is here to serve you.